Invasive species affect almost all countries around the world, but some are more badly affected than others. Invasive species have a bigger impact on more fragile ecosystems, and some of the most fragile ecosystems are island ecosystems. Because most islands have been separated from the rest of the world for millions of years, it often means that they have a very unique ecosystem with plants and animals that can't be found anywhere else in the world. Outside invaders can disrupt the natural balance, and this is bad news for the overall ecosystem, and also for the island's economy. This is possibly why Australia is one of the worst affected countries when it comes to invasive species, because even though it is a continent, it is essentially a giant island. Most of its wildlife can't be found anywhere else in the world, but today most of this native wildlife is threatened. Wildfires have caused major problems in recent years, but invasive species are still one of the main threats to the native species. Luckily, Australia is home to some mean predators, and in recent years these predators have been fighting back. In today's video I will be going through just a few examples, because I will be going through three native Australian predators that hunt invasive species. And to start off with, our first problem species is the European rabbit. Now this species of rabbit is native to the Iberian Peninsula, but it has been introduced into other parts of Europe, and also South America. At first it may be strange to think that this rabbit can cause a lot of damage, simply because they're quite a small and powerless creature, and also because they're listed as endangered. This rabbit is one of the few invasive species that is listed as endangered, and there are a few reasons behind this. Of course large numbers of these mammals are taken out by farmers, and in many areas there have habitat has been destroyed. Surprisingly, these aren't the main factors, because in recent years disease has killed off large numbers of these European rabbits. If you are an Australian, this might be strange to hear, because in Australia the European rabbit is one of the most widely distributed and abundant mammals. There are thought to be around 200 million on the continent, and this is around 8 times the human population of Australia. These are truly astonishing numbers, and this population only started with 13 individuals. Of course, like with most invasive species in Australia, the European rabbits were in introduced by the Europeans. In 1859, 13 of these rabbits were shipped across the world into the hands of a wealthy settler known as Thomas Austin. He let these rabbits roam free across his estate, and it only took them 50 years to breed to astonishing numbers and spread across the entire continent. There were plenty of predators that would happily prey on these rabbits, but famously rabbits breed at an astonishing rate, and the native predators weren't used to targeting these mammals. As you can imagine, these rabbits had a massive negative impact on the ecosystem, and also to the economy. They destroyed crops and land leading to soil erosion, and they negatively affected the native plants by feeding on them. Through grazing, they also competed with the native species, and the Australian ecosystem is still suffering today. Strangely, one of their main predators today is also another invasive species. The red fox was also introduced by the Europeans, and although it is a massive problem leading to large declines in predator numbers, it is one of the few predators to target these rabbits. As well as this, there are some native predatory marsupials that also like to feed on them, these being the quolls. There are six species of quoll alive today, four of which are found in Australia and two are found in New Guinea. These are very interesting and unique predators, and although they look quite cute, they can be quite brutal killers. Many quoll species have been affected by the introduction of the red fox, and also because of the introduction of the cane toad. I have featured the cane toad in one of these videos before, so it won't be making an appearance in this video, but the cane toad's toxin can prove fatal to these quolls. These quolls feed on most creatures that are smaller than them, and this often includes rabbits. Of course the different species vary in size, but on average they are a little larger than your domesticated cat. This means that hunting rabbits is no problem for them, and they can also target other invasive species such as rats and mice. Most of the quoll species are threatened today, but hopefully if they keep targeting the European rabbits they will be able to make a comeback. And even though their numbers have been negatively affected by invasive species, at least today they are fighting back. But our next problem species is a much larger mammal, and it is the water buffalo. Now the water buffalo is a large bovid, originating in the Indian subcontinent and Southeast Asia. Of course today it does have a much larger range, and that's because it's a very important animal to us humans. Of course there are many wild water buffalo, but a large number of them are also domesticated. They are very large powerful creatures and are used in farming all over the world. This was originally why they were introduced into Australia, and the first introductions happened in the 19th century. They were introduced to supply meat to the remote northern settlements, but these settlements and their buffalo were abandoned in 1949. 
With no humans to watch them, they were free to roam. And they soon spread and occupied all major habitat types in the Northern Territory. Because these are such large animals, they can have a massive negative impact on an ecosystem. And there was simply very little stopping them from doing what they wanted. Today, their world population in Australia is thought to be around 150,000 animals. And these animals are still causing problems today. These buffalo have a significant environmental impact, mostly by trampling floodplain environments and causing damage to Australia's freshwater swamps. They can completely change the structure of certain habitats, and this has a huge knock-on effect to other animals. Their size is one of the reasons why they've been able to spread so easily, because there's simply very few predators that can take down an adult water buffalo. Luckily for the overall Australian ecosystem, one of these predators does live in Australia, and also inhabits the same area as the wild water buffalo. The saltwater crocodile is considered the largest living reptile, and can grow to lengths of up to 6.3 meters. It is a hypercarnivorous apex predator predator and will feed on almost any animal that enters their territory. As their name suggests, they can be found in freshwater and saltwater, and in some cases they will feed on other impressive predators such as sharks. It's thought that there are around a thousand crocodilian attacks on humans each year, but really these reptiles have more to fear from us. In the mid-1960s, these crocodiles were almost hunted to extinction, but thanks to strict protections, they were able to recover. There are still many conflicts with humans in the Northern Territory, because not only would these crocodiles take down the invasive water buffalo, but they will also take down livestock too. This leads to many saltwater crocodiles being shot, but because they're one of the few predators that can take down the water buffalo, they really are an important predator to have around. But our final problem species is possibly the most hated and loved fish in the world, and it is the carp. Across the world, carp are loved by many fishermen, but they are also one of the worst invasive species in the world. Over the past few hundred years, they have been introduced into almost every continent, and along the way they have caused massive negative impacts, and have also led to some extinctions. Although carp were first introduced into Australia in the mid-1800s, they only became widespread in the Murray-Darling system in the 1970s. This was after large-scale flooding, and large numbers of these carp escaped from a fish farm. Today it's thought that carp can be found in 97% of Australia's large east coast rivers, and it's thought to be over 200 million of these fish across the continent. Of course this has had a massive negative effect on Australia's freshwater ecosystems, and this is mainly due down to the way that carp feed. Most of the time carp feed in the substrate, and when they do this they churn up a lot of sediment. This sediment results in reduced water quality, and also contributes to algal blooms. These algal blooms are sometimes toxic, and can lead to huge die-offs in native species. The carp is also a very hardy species and can survive in waters where other fish can't. Luckily Australia is home to one very large predatory fish that is more than happy to help tackle the carp problem. The Murray Cod is the largest Australian predatory freshwater fish, and although it's named after the cod, it's not a cod at all. Instead, it's a temperate perch, and spends most of its day feeding on other fish and crustaceans. Giant Murray Cod are quite rare nowadays, but they used to reach astonishing sizes. The largest on record was 1.8 meters long, and weighed 113 kilograms. Unfortunately, they were severely overfished in the 1800s, and this is partly the reason why giants are rare nowadays. But even though they don't get as large as they used to, they will still happily feed on carp, and even though they only make a small dent in their numbers, they are an important predatory fish nonetheless. Of course there are many other creatures that could have made it in this video, so if you know of any let me know down in the comments below. And also as always it's important that we don't villainize these invasive species. They are simply just trying to survive, but there is a reason that we try to control them. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these, but until next time, goodbye.